Hi, this is Dave Vita with Edison Hollow. You're listening to Rock at Night. Welcome to the Rock at Night Podcast. This is Vlad. On this episode, we're talking with an energetic and clever band that's emerging in the Detroit music scene. A warm Rock at Night welcome to Edison Hollow. I mean, I've been in this band for about two years now. Um, previous to this, we existed as an incarnation called Bread Baron. And uh, that was more a Tyler and Jordan's thing. They had a whole group before that, and they went back for, like, what, five, six years? Oh, eight years, yeah. So they brought me on, and at first I was just filling in, and then it kind of turned into, like, all right, well, let's play all these shows, and then I was, like, starting to get into the music, and uh, I was like, you know what, I'll help you guys record your album. And then by the end of it, it was just like, I want to join this band, you know? And so... You know, we did the three-piece thing for the first year, and then we got Mr. Dave Vita here, and uh, it's been awesome ever since. We've been just grinding it out, playing wherever we can, um, just trying to, you know, make the name for ourselves and all that stuff. Do you guys have anything to add? Yeah, I was playing bass. This is Tyler, the singer, guitar, rhythm guitar player, and uh, it was mine and Jordan's thing back in the day, uh, Red Baron. And uh, our rhythm section at the time had fallen apart, so I decided I was going to play bass <clears throat> and do that for uh, what turned into three years or so. And that's, yeah, that's when we found Dave, and Dave is the missing link. Uh, I think he's actually the missing link on the evolutionary chart as well. Um, so he decided he was going to come and play bass with us so I could go back to playing guitar because I hate playing the bass. <laughs> so. I feel much more comfortable on the guitar, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of the general background, I guess. Right now, we're just uh, firing on all cylinders and trying to write the best music we can and bring it to as many people as possible, trying to spread the word of rock and roll again, you know, and try to do it genuinely. And uh, I'm not in the business of naming names, but you know who I'm talking about when I say uh, genuinely. We're obviously rooted in something classic, just trying to make it... Uh, real again let's say i were a, a punter coming off the street and i saw that your name's on the billboard somewhere and i'm wondering gee maybe i should check these guys out they're playing live what am i in for if i were to catch you live a wild ride that's for sure uh we try to be as lively and the highest caliber octane whatever you'd like to call it as humanly possible when we play live for us it's we don't just want to be another band up on the stage. We want you guys to, we want to put that, I know it's corny to say this, but we want to pack that arena show into the dive bar. We want you guys to like, you guys are trusting us as your entertainment, right? So we want to make sure, regardless whether it's a $5 cover or a $20 cover, you know, we want to give you a show that you're going to, hey, I'm glad I went to this tonight. Really something that people can enjoy, music that we find gratification in and music that we can give to the people you know we are a band of the people i hear your songs what kind of themes or what kind of things drive your themes that are that are in your material oh all kinds of things <laughs> um lately i've been really trying to get into the idea of uh imagery that'll let you take whatever is there on the page and apply it to whatever you want it to be uh i've been in the habit of writing things very directly and things that mean something to me um, you know, songs like What's So Funny, our latest release, um, a video will be out for in September, it was about the protest movement going on over quarantine, uh, meant something a lot to me, and, uh, so I reckoned I'd write a song about it, and, uh, and songs like Bad Things, you know, about my personal childhood, and I think probably 75% of the world's children you know not uh, the first line is a broken home is no excuse now i never thought it was anyhow it's things that you it's all relative uh relative happiness like 
I might think I had it bad. I, did, I probably didn't have it that bad compared to most people. I was born in America. I didn't have it that bad. But I understand that there's people that just don't have an outlet for their bad, whatever their bad is. And if it's the music, then I reckon I did my job. So, you're, so your music is really a channel for that kind of energy, that kind of uh, uh, dissonance, that kind of, uh, if I can call it, maybe rage or that kind of uh, feeling? At times, it's about rage, it's about love, it's about unity, it's about... Uh, that's what my biggest goal could be, is to bring people together over one common ground being music. You feel what the song's about in the music with us, I feel that's very important for the... We usually, the process is usually the music's, the music comes first. We're musicians. We're very, we're pretty good musicians <laughs> individually. When we come together, something very, very special happens, in my opinion. But, um, and then I take that for what it is and try to write something real that reflects the music. So it's one big package, you know, like, uh, but there's like one song off our, the, the closing track on our debut record is called I Failed You, and it's about death and loss and, and that, and it's just me and a guitar and a string quartet, you know. Like, we don't always have to be banging to get the point across, right. you know. Sometimes it's a very tender issue you could be trying to tackle, and the music ought to reflect that. Whenever we come to Detroit, we always like to ask bands about Detroit roots. I presume you all grew up in this metro Detroit area or whatever. Uh, are there any particular musicians that you look up to, and how... Uh, as far as your Detroit roots, how has your Detroit roots formed or who you are? I think this will be one we'll have to pass the, ma the mic around on. I'm sure everyone's got something to say. But uh, for me personally, it's the, uh, as far as Detroit directly, I don't have much ties to the, to that, to the history of it. I mean, I enjoy a lot of the music that came out of it like everybody else. Where my personal, uh, Roots Lies is in the Chicago Delta Blues. That's my thing. And I've always wanted to go to that place. I feel like it's calling me for some reason. I think that's why. You know, Detroit had its blues scene. But, uh, you know, the garage rock movement and a, a lot of the good punk music that's out now comes out of Detroit. And I love that stuff. But I wouldn't say it's sort of shaped me in any way. That's just me. I'll pass it to Dave now. Can't talk about Detroit music without talking about Motown. So, um, absolute classic. They wrote some absolute bangers. And as a bass player, you know, you got to take notes from that. And, uh, you know, I grew up playing punk rock and pop punk, so I'm always used to playing fast. And then when I started, I started playing uh, with some bluegrass groups, and that really taught me how to be, uh, you know, an actual real bass player and playing on the rhythm section so also taking inspiration from those motown bass lines where you know the the bass and the, the bass you know moves the whole song so um yeah you definitely can't talk about you know music in detroit without bringing that up so i think for me like dave was saying you know you have your grassroots like you have the motown stuff and then you have bands like uh the mc5 and like all these historic venues around here you have like the grandy ballroom the old michigan theater and like even pj's lager house that place has been around since you know the 70s and it's like i think there's a special caliber of bands and musicians that have a tendency to come out of detroit i think like as opposed to other places like every place has a, has a music scene but i think detroit has housed some of the hardest working acts that have ever graced stages before you know and especially bands like the mc5 and like the the classic motown stuff or aretha franklin and stevie wonder and stuff it's like such incredible legacies have been formed here and it kind of bums me out to see like how we've kind of fallen off in a way like from the national spectrum because in our own like little pocket detroit is just the place to be for music right so um just trying to honor that legacy while also like forging something for ourselves is something is very important to all of us and like really trying to bring the attention back i mean we're the rock city you know so and stuff like that and when i was in high school we uh i had this film program and there was this gentleman named russ gibb who uh 
he went to Dearborn High and he was, he started the film program I was in and as you know he brought legendary artists to your, he brought Zeppelin, The Who, Hendrix. Yeah, back porch video was your band. Back porch video that has some of the, uh so I'm also a big punk rock guy and they have some of the most legendary yeah. videos like of high school students filming the misfits at like a VFW hall outside of Dearborn or like that crazy Henry, Henry Rollins video yeah. like when he's like ripping that kid apart. So, um, just stuff like that, you know, I just want to, I want to honor the legacy and also help get it back on the map because, uh, there's that one band out there who shan't be named, but they're not doing a good job in my opinion. Jordan? Well, my Detroit influence, the Motor City Madman for sure. Musically, he, I've put my focus in playing and rock and roll guitar playing, so what a better Detroit rock and roll guitar player to follow than, you know, Ted Nugent. So, if I see a, a common thread amongst the, what the four of you just said, it seems to me that truth is at the essence of really what all of you are pursuing. You're not making up something in terms of making up an illusion or something. Your music really is rooted in a truth, and you're really pushing that truth has to be a guiding force. It has to be a guiding vision to that. Is that something that uh, that really motivates how you look at your material and how you perform? Yeah, I can sit here with my funny boots on and my red suspenders on because we're having a, a little photo get-together after. But uh, at the end of the day, it's it's still, you know, it's a part, it's a side of me too, the red suspenders and being goofy and throwing my guitar down on stage and jumping into the crowd. I do that, you know. Jordan's always done that. and We've always been a big proponent in that the, the music is true and the, the stage show, that's always been my, my struggle with it is trying to keep the stage show as honest as I feel the music is because, you know, I'm sitting here right now and I'm not screaming in your face and jumping around at you. But that's part of the show. Sure. It's what hooks people. you got to get people's attention still to tell them the truth. So <clears throat> I don't mind being crazy sometimes just to get you to listen to me, <laughs> essentially. I don't know. Does anyone have anything on that? I think at the core of it, like like Tyler was saying, like obviously you got to like ham it on a little bit when you're playing live and you got to put on the show. But at the core of what at least like I believe this band to be like, we're not trying to sell you some grandiose image of like, oh, we're this like thing, this. Yeah, exactly. We don't want to be anything more or anything less than what we are. And, you know, like some people will be into that and some people won't be because, you know, everybody likes icon to latch on to and not that it, like these guys don't have the potential to be an icon in their own rights i just i don't think that's at the core like what we're about i think we just like, want to do it honestly like the like you were saying you know we want to keep it as honest and true to us as possible we don't want to sell out ourselves into some weird perversion of what we are i would like to add that we play the music that we would want to hear you know absolutely yeah, it's it's essentially just how how do we how do like Jordan said how do we put the music out that we wish we were hearing, and the stage show is the is the door to get people in. Once we get you in, and you listen to what we're saying, you will realize oh these guys got something to say, and and I think they mean it. We try to that's the biggest thing for me is making sure people understand we mean it. It's not I, it's not just uh, going on rhyme zone and putting a puzzle piece together with the poetry of it it's real you know very real and it sounds grandiose to even say that it sounds like i take myself very seriously probably but uh, i really don't i just take what i what i put out musically very seriously that's all yeah and for me i just you know i play music because i love it and i just i the idea of playing music and doing it is just fun and you know when we do a live show you know we just try to have as much fun as possible because it's infectious so, you know, if, if if we're having a good time, it's impossible for other people to have a bad time. You know, we're not going to sit there and, you know, act all serious and stoic and stuff like that. So I feel like I should add to that fun thing, too, because I do feel like I'm sounding really serious. <laughs> it is so fun. Like the four of us on stage have the most fun. Uh, like th we just did a show uh, yesterday. Was it yesterday or sat? I don't know. Two days ago. Yeah, in Albion, we played at Albion Malleable uh, Brewing Company, which if you are ever in that part of Michigan, you should definitely check out. Those guys are awesome. Ben is a sweet guy. Emily, our server, was lovely. The four of us had a ball. I mean, there was there was a good amount of people there, you know, and they're, they're listening to what we have to, to do and all that, but 
the four of us are cracking each other up on stage the whole time, and that becomes the vibe of the thing. They see us smiling, and they want to smile too, you know. And I've heard a lot of that smiling. They think that we, like, mess up, and we're looking at each other, making fun of each other for our mess up, but really we're just, sometimes we are making fun of each other, but a lot of it's just, you know, we love doing what we're doing with each other, and it's part of being in a band together, you know. You said you have a debut album. Uh, Tell me a little bit about your discography and what's coming up. It was the worst possible time, I think, to release a debut record. It came out April 4th of 2019, which if you're listening to this far into the future, was right when they shut the world down. 2020. No, no, no. Oh, it was April 2020. That's right. Has it only been a year? Okay, the record came out in 2020. I'm sorry. That 2020 doesn't count in my brain anymore. But, uh, yeah, so the record came out April 4th, 2020. We recorded it in 2019. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so uh, that came out. We were going to play. We had this whole release show planned at our buddy's new bar, Parks and Labor in Melvindale, a uh, guy that used to run the Rockery. Um, and that all fell apart, just like everything else did. You know, there's not much to talk about when the world's falling apart as far as, hey, listen to my album whenever you're done not being terrified. So... <laughs> So we put it out. We did what we could with it. You know, we we shot a couple videos for it that are on our YouTube, Medicine Hollow YouTube. Uh, we shot one for Road Song, which was essentially just a compilation of being on the road. Uh, and then uh, Circle of Madness, which I shot and edited with our uh, our starring our our roadie and best friend Ryan Ryan Sekmish, uh, who isn't here unfortunately. I wish he was. He's a he's a he's a card, but. Uh, so we, we put that out because we figure, you know, keep things happening. And we did some live streams and stuff from uh, our practice spot, The Hollow. And uh, But anyway, so as far as uh, the releasing of music went, we kind of just rode out 2020 to see how shows were going to be. And, you know, we did a couple things here and there and made ends meet and all that. And then towards the end of 2020, we decided, well, let's put out a, let's do, let's go cut a couple singles or something, you know, kick off 2021 right. And that's when we went in and did Bad Things and What's So Funny with uh, David Misavith of Pearl Sound Studios. Uh, David uh, Tuxedo M- oh, Tuxedo Ad. And, that's right. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> Tuxedo Ave. I'm glad I have Aaron here to fact check me. But uh, if you don't know Misavith, he's, uh, he's also the sound guy at uh, Andrews. St. Andrews and Masonic and sometimes Smalls. <coughs> I will bring up Pearl Sound later. <laughs> Chuck will appreciate that. Uh, and we decided to cut bad things. And what's so funny? Um, so we did, and uh, bad things came out in February of 2021, which came out with the lyric video. Uh, our friend Kevin Lynch, a very talented uh, filmmaker, and uh, a, I think we were the first lyric video he did, or maybe the first one he took seriously. I don't know that for sure. He said he was, yeah, his thing is Strings Media, that's the name of his brand, but uh, he did a great job on the Bad Things lyric video, that's up there as well, and who al- he also shot our upcoming video for What's So Funny, um, which came out in April of 2021, so, you know, we we did our thing with that, shows were starting to become a thing, we kind of put, putting new things off for a while, now we have um, a remixed new and improved version of What's So Funny from our friend Chuck Alkazian at Pearl Sound Studios. Uncle Chuck Chuck indeed. uh, Coming out. That'll, I think, I think that'll be out with the music video, right? Uh, As of right now, it's scheduled to drop uh, September 22nd. Yeah, so that'll be coming out in September. uh, The new version of What's So Funny and the video. We at least have one song also in the can with Chuck right now. That'll be we have to work out when that'll be released, I think, yet. Yeah, we still have to do some touches on the mixes and stuff. But that song's called Body's Guest. And that's one of our favorite ones to play live. That's a really fun song. The lyrics of that one really aren't anything special to talk about. It's just a, it's a good song. You know, it's a good good tune. But, um, yeah, that'll be out. I don't even want to guess. I really couldn't tell you right now. Because uh, we have some other pretty interesting things planned for the rest of the year. And, uh... We'll just have to see. 
Um, as far as anything else recorded music wise, um, that all remains to be seen because we're going we're we're going through a transitional period in our um, comeuppance. I'll call it. I think we're. St- I'm not trying to sound any sort of way, but I, I have a f- good feeling about the rest of this year and the beginning of next year for us. So we're just kind of seeing where all the balls are going to land right now. Addison Hollow, thanks for taking the time to talk with us this evening. How can our listeners learn more about you? All the social medias are uh, up and running. Edison Hollow on Facebook, on Instagram, and then all our music's on all the streaming services. It's on YouTube if you don't care to do that, any of those things. You're listening to Rock at Night. The introductory song, Get On Down, is from blues artist Billy Bass Alford. Look for his music at ReverbNation.com.